right. Good afternoon, everyone. I appreciate you taking the time to attend this call. I'm Sid Rajiv, Head of Research at Fundamental Research. And our guest today is Paul Gill, CEO of Lomico Metals. Lomico is a gra graphite junior with a technology angle to the story. Thank you, for, uh, Paul, for uh, joining us today. So the agenda today is uh, I'll kick off the call with our thoughts on energy-related commodities and more specifically graphite. Paul will take over from there and provide us with some thoughts on his team's plans for 2020, and we can conclude this meeting with a Q&A. Before I get started, to everyone who has dialed in today, I also recommend to click on the link we sent out. You'll then be able to see my screen. You can either wait till the end to ask questions, or if you have questions during the presentation, feel free to type them in and we'll try to respond to them. Here are some key disclaimers. Please take a moment. All right, so the group Energy Metals primarily includes four commodities, cobalt, lithium, nickel, and graphite. Note that graphite is technically not a metal, but we still included this uh, graphite in this group. In a, in a lithium iron battery, lithium is used as the electrolyte, graphite as the anode, which is the negative side, and cobalt and nickel are normally used as the cathode, which is the positive side. Now let's take a look at the prices of each commodity. You can see the price chart of cobalt here. Cobalt had an excellent run from 2016 to 2018, subsequently collapsed and have recovered somewhat in the past few months. Lithium has a similar chart, huge run up from 2016 to 2018, subsequent collapse, and then minor recovery in the past few months. As for nickel, prices doubled from $4 to $8 a pound from 2016 to 2019, but have since come off its highs. Now let's take a look at graphite. It had a massive run from 2009 to 2012, subsequent collapse, and since then prices never, never really took off like the other commodities. Now this chart here shows recent prices, except for large flake graphite, which I'll talk about in a second. Prices in general have been relatively stable. Let's now look at the graphite market in general. This is a slightly outdated chart, but it serves the purpose as it nicely summarizes the market. The graphite market includes both natural and synthetic graphite. The total market size is approximately 2.5 million tons per year of which 1.5 million tons or 60% is synthetic. And the remaining 40% or 1 million tons is natural. Within natural, there are three forms of graphite, flake, amorphous, and veins. Flake makes up about 70% about or 700,000 tons. Pricing of these three types differ drastically based on its quality and purity uh, with flake having the highest price. What we are interested in here is also flake graphite, which is the material that is used in batteries. It's est estimated that lithium ion batteries currently account for 25% of flake graphite demand. We believe the battery space will be the key driver, demand driver of flake graphite. Why do we believe so? Let's take a look. As shown here, battery costs are declining dramatically. The cost of battery for EVs, which is electric vehicle, was 50% of the price of a car back in uh, 2015. And this number is expected to drop to 25% by 2025. Again, as shown here, prices of EVs are expected to be competitive starting 2024. On the demand side of ba batteries, Lithium ion batteries are used in a wide range of electronic equipment, such as mobile phones, laptops, cameras. However, we believe the biggest growth driver will be the use of batteries in electric vehicles. The International Energy Agency, which expects, uh, uh, they expect global electric car sales to reach 23 million by 2030. That's up from just 5 million um, cars this year. Bloomberg Energy also has a similar outlook as, as you can see from the chart here. They also predict that 55% of all new car sales will be electric by 2040. 
Now let's take a look at how graphite will benefit from this exponential growth in EV sales. As shown here, an electric vehicle requires ab about 75 kilograms of graphite. This compares to 10 kilograms of cobalt, 20 kilograms of lithium carbonate, and 30 kilograms of nickel. This implies that 23 million electric vehicles, which is the forecast of sales in 2030, we estimate would need approximately 860,000 new tons of graphite. Now remember, remember that I had mentioned earlier that the current demand for graphite is 25% of flake, and which is about 200,000 tons. What that means is the total demand for graphite just from EV would exceed 1 million tons by 2030. Bloomberg Energy also has similar forecast. Notice the significant expected demand of all the key battery inputs, including graphite in this chart. The significant increase in expected demand for graphite can be met by both natural flake graphite or synthetic graphite. To make natural flake graphite into spherical graphite, which is the final product used in batteries, the cost is about $6,000 a ton. And that you can see from the chart here. If natural flake graphite is priced at $1,500 per ton, which is the current price, the total cost will be approximately $7,500 per ton. However, synthetic graphite sells at $8,000 to $20,000 per ton. So you can clearly see there's a huge cost advantage for high and good quality natural flake graphite sellers. Now let's see where this natural flake graphite comes from. The chart shows here the mine production. More than 70% of the production currently comes from China. However, China's production is declining, as you can see from the chart here, and they've started importing graphite from, African, uh, from Africa recently. The net impact of this is that we are likely to see a significant shortfall in graphite supply as shown in this chart. The market is expected to be in a deficit by 2023 slash 2024. Bottom line, we believe major mining companies, battery manufacturers, technology players will look, for, look out for high quality flake graphite projects in politically safe jurisdictions so that they have access to long-term stable supply.